Let's dive into some important tips for wild hearts that everybody needs to know. First off, I want to give a big thank you to EA for sponsoring this video and providing us a copy of the game. Alright, let's get into it. The first and probably most important tip is to use and abuse the training bear. The on-screen tutorials in the game do an okay job of explaining all the different weapons in the game, but to really master them, you're going to need the help of this furry wooden creature. The training bear can be found just outside the giant tree where you build your first camp. Activate the training bear and give it a few whacks and it will eventually teach you all the moves associated with your weapon. In case you were wondering why your hunts are taking forever or your hits aren't doing a ton of damage, well, you're probably not fully utilizing the powerful moves hidden inside your weapon. For example, the Maul, which is a slower hammer type weapon, has some surprisingly weak attacks. That is, until you unleash a finishing combo which does a ton of damage. I wouldn't have discovered that without the help of our trusty training bear. Don't forget to experiment with different weapons and find out which one is right for you. For beginners, I recommend the Katana since its mechanics are very easy to learn and it's a pretty quick and nimble weapon which will help you avoid monster attacks. The most common mistake I see from online players in the beginning stages of Wild Hearts is they always forget to eat. Eating food items that you pick up when exploring the various locations will grant buffs to your character like increasing their maximum health and defense or increasing their attack stats. You should always eat until your character is full before every fight. I admit I too would often forget to eat in the beginning and then I would wonder why every hit from the kimonos was knocking down half my health. So before you set off on a hunt, press left on the D-pad to open up your backpack and choose some food items to eat. The various creatures in Wild Hearts don't exist just to be killed for materials or ingredients. They are also there to be pet. Yes, even the scary looking ones. All you have to do is crouch and sneak up behind the animal and press L2 or whatever the pet prompt is for you. And it's not just a silly mechanic either, it's actually crucial for getting unique materials that are necessary to upgrade weapons and armor. Also keep in mind that if you're in a later chapter in the game, some animals drop a different material from being killed or pet, like these lizards here. On top of petting animals in the wild, those little creatures that you capture have a purpose too. Unlock the wildlife cages and pens in your skill tree and you can display your newfound pets for all the world to see. More importantly though, if you wait long enough, usually the span of one hunt, some of these creatures will drop unique materials that you may need for some weapon and armor upgrades. The Kimono Cyclopedia is one of the most important tools in the game. It will tell you what element each monster is weakest to, that way you can bring the right gear to deal maximum damage to that specific monster. And just so there's no confusion, more stars under an element means a greater weakness towards that element. So 4 stars underwater means the monster is super weak to water. So bring a weapon that has the water element infused on your hunt. If you want to save yourself a lot of time, I would just focus on upgrading fire or water weapons and ignore the other elements. I explain why in my Wild Hearts time saving video that you can find in the link in the description of this video. Now one important thing to know is that a monster's page in the Kimono Cyclopedia won't appear until you've encountered that monster. But that doesn't mean you have to fully hunt the monster first. You just need to find the monster, give them a couple whacks until their name card pops up, then run away. And there you go. Now you have their monster info in your guide and you'll be ready to take them on in any future hunts. This next tip is a big one and I hate that I didn't realize it was an option until very late into the game. So throughout the game you'll be spending your precious monster materials on upgrading your weapons and following different branches in the weapon tree. But you may not have realized that you can actually roll back your weapon upgrades and you'll receive back all the monster materials you used on those upgrades. This massively cuts back on the stress of trying to predict which route you should go down in the weapon tree, or if you find yourself at a roadblock on an upgrade that you don't have the materials for and you wish you went down a different path, you don't need to start from scratch on a whole new weapon. No more grinding out rage tail hunts for you. And the only cost of rolling back your weapon is some gold. It can add up to be pretty pricey if you do it too much, but luckily our next tip will keep you very wealthy. Sell your useless items. That's right, there's items you've been collecting and you probably don't even realize that they have absolutely no use except to be sold. These items have an icon that look like three coins and are usually included in your hunt rewards. Check in with the merchant every now and then and sell all this junk for a nice hefty gold reward. If you're just starting out, don't stress, you'll discover the merchant once you get to the hub town known as Monado. While eating food is the best way to increase your health, it is unfortunate that those health gains go away after you successfully hunt a kimono. Well luckily there is a way to increase your max health permanently and it involves taking a nice warm bath. 
Now these upgrades are really easy to miss because unlike normal side quests, there's no notification to let you know this is even available. But at some point in your journey, you'll be able to talk to this character here at the bathhouse in the main hub town, and they'll ask you to bring them certain monster materials to upgrade the baths. Bring them the materials and they will upgrade the baths which will then permanently upgrade your maximum health. And just to be clear, you don't need to actually take a bath before each fight to get the health boost. In fact, I don't think they really serve any other purpose except to just be zen and chill out. There's a lot of upgrades to choose from in the skill tree and it may be difficult deciding which to unlock first. Well, keep your eye on this upgrade to your watchtowers. Once purchased, it will show you hidden sukumos and documents as well as talismans on your map. Talismans are accessories that you can equip to your character from the workbench which gives status boosts. You can equip up to 5 talismans. The talismans found on the map are awesome though because you normally have to go pretty far into the game's story to get your first talisman naturally from a hunt or a side quest. So with the watchtower upgrade, you can get to hunting down talismans from the very early stages of the game and give your character quite a nice boost you wouldn't normally have until much later on. If you're struggling with the fighting aspect of this game early on, or maybe you're just stuck on a really tough kimono, the best tip to get over that hurdle is to utilize the online play functions. Use a campfire or a dragon gate to find an online session or allow others to join yours and get a nice crew of hunters together to take on these kimono. Even though the monster's health and stamina increases as more players join your hunt, the power of their attacks stays the same. Having more players in your hunt will almost always make the fights easier because the monster's attention won't be solely drawn to you. If you're still struggling with the monster, look them up in the Kimono Cyclopedia and find their natural element. Then create armor that is strong against that element. If you're missing materials to make that armor, then hunt some monsters with the group to quickly get the materials you need. Then you can forge that armor that is resistant to that Kimono's elemental attacks. Doing so will make these hunts a lot more manageable. Well, hopefully you found these tips helpful and thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and if you have any other tips for fellow hunters or if you'd like to see more videos like this one, let me know in the comments below. Thanks and happy hunting!